A 12-year-old paddleboarder dies after being hit by a jet ski on Mission Bay. Coming up, reaction and what rules you need to know when out on the water. A police dog and the man who shot him both dead. The latest on the investigation. Honoring the service of Sir. And we'll take a close look at some of the other police dogs that have put their life on the line. A lawsuit alleging corruption, uh, retaliation, and an inappropriate relationship within the San Diego Unified School District's police department. They're already training for the Artemis II manned mission around the moon. We'll give you an up-close look at the Orion test capsule. CBS 8 News, live at 6, starts now. Tonight, the San Diego Police Department's Harbor Unit is asking for witnesses to come forward as they continue to investigate a jet ski crash that killed a child on a paddleboard. Good evening, I'm Jesse Pagan, in for Marcella Lee. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. That crash happened just before 2 Saturday afternoon on Mission Bay. CBS 8's Shannon Handy has what we know about the crash as well as the rules to follow when you're out on the water. The 12 year old powder border was out here in Deanza Cove when she was hit. Beyond that, investigators are releasing very few details about what led up to the crash. So people who frequent the area tell me it's a tragic reminder to know the rules and use caution when out on the water. It just rips your heart out. Mark Brown and his wife go paddleboarding several times a week on Mission Bay. They know the area well, saying they're always keeping a close watch on what's around them just in case. Do you ever feel unsafe? Absolutely. When uh, people aren't paying attention, you have to get their eye. As we're crossing the main channel, we're constantly got our head on a swivel. Mark says he's seen boaters and jet skiers go too fast or get too close to paddleboarders such as himself. Others have too. Jane Ross tells me in those instances, it's the motorized vessel's responsibility to move out of the way. They've got the power. They've got the power to turn, you know, abort what they're heading towards. We can only move so quickly out of their way. While specific details surrounding Saturday's crash aren't being released, the first call to dispatchers reported the jet ski involved have been speeding. There is a subject speeding on a jet ski and ran over a female that was on a paddleboard. She's unconscious. It happened on the southeast side of De Anza Cove. A boat was used to bring the young girl to shore where she was given CPR immediately. She was then rushed to Scripps La Jolla where tragically she died. Her name has not been released. Meanwhile, San Diego police identified the jet ski driver as an 18 year old bellflower man. Investigators do not believe alcohol played a role. It's unclear if any charges are pending. It shouldn't have happened. People I spoke with today say the tragedy highlights the importance of following the rules out here. A large sign near the crash scene lists them. For starters, the speed limit in Dienza Cove is five miles per hour. The same rule applies in other places if you're 100 feet from another vessel or swimmer, as well as 100 feet from shore and within 200 feet of a dock or landing float. Surrounding areas have varying controlled speed limits listed on buoys. The only area without a daytime speed limit is in Fiesta Bay, further south from where the girl was hit. It's a terrible tragedy. And if it happened where the rules are for slow boating, then that's even worse. Shanna Handy, CBS 8. A 10 year old boy is being treated for head injuries tonight. San Diego police detectives say he was hit by a car in Logan Heights around 2 this afternoon. It happened at the intersection of Ocean View Boulevard and South 29th Street. We're told the driver did stop and is cooperating with investigators. There's no word tonight on the boy's condition. We will have updates as we get them at CBS8.com, the CBS8 app, and later tonight on the 10 o'clock news on the CW San Diego and CBS8 News at 11. Tonight, a San Diego police dog and the man who shot him are both dead. It all happened around 3 this morning near Mesa College. CBS 8's Rocio de la Fe is live in Claremont with an update on the investigation tonight. Rocio. Well, the investigation is still in its very early stages at this moment, but we know this all began at this morning um, where in the early morning hours, detectives with the sheriff's department believe this may have all began as road rage. The suspect in this case followed a person into a neighborhood, shot at that person, left that scene, and then came here to Mesa College where the deadly shooting then unfolded. We believe that it started uh, on the roadways, uh, one vehicle possibly trying to pass another vehicle or some type of incident. The San Diego Sheriff's Department is investigating what led up to this. They know it started near Ben Street. The suspect who was driving this white Tesla shot at another person multiple times, then drove away. San Diego PD officers located the Tesla. They saw the suspect with a handgun. 
and they attempted to stop the suspect. He fled and drove onto Mesa College campus. When officers got to the campus, they located the car, but no one was inside. Officers found the suspect armed in another part of the campus a short time later. He was ordered to drop his weapon, but refused. That's when police released a canine to take him down. The canine was shot during the process by the suspect. A police officer quickly returned fire, striking the suspect. He was taken to the hospital where he later died. The canine, known as Sir, was taken to a vet clinic where he was pronounced dead. Now, a good news in all of this is that the person the suspect had originally shot at, as well as the officers involved in this incident, none of them were injured in this shooting. Rocio, this was so close to Mesa College. Do we know anything about the campus tonight? Is it closed? Well, at last check, Mesa College is open except for parking lots one, two, and three. Back to you. All right, Rocio Lafay we'll live for us tonight. Rocio, we'll thank you. And Sir is not the first San Diego police dog to die in the line of duty. CBS 8's Steve Price talked with a member of the department's canine unit about the physical risks the dogs take to keep the officers and the community safe. San Diego police posted to social media today that they are touched by the outpouring of support and condolences that they've received. Sir joined their ranks in March 2022 and quickly earned respect as a valuable member of the team. The four and a half year old Belgian Malinois shot and killed this morning in the line of duty. He's the second San Diego police canine killed on the job in the program's history that dates back nearly 40 years. Bondo was hit by a car and killed in 1994 while chasing a murder suspect. The bond between our canines and our canine handlers is incredibly powerful. Lieutenant Chris Tavanian with the SDPD canine unit says today's loss is hitting his department hard. The dogs are like family. They train together, they grow together, they go to dangerous radio calls together. The dogs often risking their lives to help keep officers in a safer position. This is Titan. In January 2021, Titan was stabbed and needed more than 100 stitches after charging at a man who had been waving a knife around. The suspect, after getting out of jail, got into another confrontation with police and stabbed a second police dog named Hondo. He suffered injuries to his side and chest. Uh, that suspect was a violent person confronting officers. If not but for the police dog, especially on that second incident, officers would have had to use deadly force to stop that threat. Good boy. This is Carson. He's been stabbed on the job twice. This was the first time going after a suspect who ran away from officers and into water. He was stabbed multiple times in the head. A few months later, Carson was stabbed in a protective vest that saved him from sustaining any serious injuries. Carson is still out on our streets protecting the public. They keep our community members safe. They help us locate and apprehend violent criminals that otherwise police officers would have to put themselves in danger or use higher levels of force to get the person into custody safely. Lieutenant Tavanian says the dogs are a valuable tool Many times, just their presence can help calm a situation down. We see time and time again where the police dog de-escalates a situation, a suspect changes his behavior once the police dog arrives on scene. The department says they are working on a way to honor, sir, give the community a chance to pay their respects. We'll pass along that information once it's announced. Steve Price, CBS 8. Overall, it's getting a little bit cooler and more comfortable outside. Yeah, but the dip in temperatures, well, not going to last that long. Mm. Chief Meteorologist Carlene Chavis here. First look at your microclimate forecast. It, really a nice summer day. Well, you know, we still have some 90s. We're not there yet, but those widespread 80s are like tomorrow. Okay. So I would definitely say that's a little bit cooler, especially when they're going to be below seasonal. And then Mother Nature said you get more heat by the weekend. So we definitely have a trade off. But the plus side is we're not talking about widespread excessive heat. There is one particular area that we're going to have to keep a close eye on. So for your highs for today, we widespread in those 90s. We had 94 degrees for Escondido, the same for Valley Center. You had 92 degrees for El Cajon today. You also had the 80s for Vista as well as for La Mesa. And even some 80s right along the North County coast. That's what was happening with all that sunshine that we were seeing today. Now, over the next few days, as mentioned, 
Houston, temperatures take a little bit of a slip. That's going to be the case by tomorrow. Not much of a slip, but then they're warming right back up again by the weekend. Upper 70s for the coastal communities. Taking a break from widespread uh, 90s, that will uh, be on Thursday and Friday, and then we get back to the heat by the weekend. But as mentioned, there is one particular area that is under an alert. So we'll go ahead and break that down coming up in your complete forecast. Jesse. Thank you, Carlene. We still don't know what caused this plane crash that killed two men in Los Angeles. It happened this morning when firefighters say the single engine plane hit the ground nose first at the Van Nuys Airport and burst into flames. Crews from a nearby fire station quickly put out the fire, as you see there, but it was too late to save the two men inside. There was nobody else on board. Investigators are trying to find out what caused a fire at a factory in Tijuana tonight. It broke out this morning. This is video from our media partner, Televisa. We're told this is a factory where memory foam is made. It's called Kalinor. Smoke could be seen from the U.S. side of the border. We still don't know if anyone was hurt. The CBS 8 Schools Out Hunger's Not Summer Food Drive is in full swing. Uh, today we hosted a day to donate drive through food drive. More than 200 pre-filled food bags were donated. If you couldn't make it, don't worry, there are other ways you can help. From now until August 20th, you can stop by any of the 72 local Albertsons or Vons to make a non-perishable food donation in those famous red food drive barrels located in front of stores. You can also visit the San Diego Food Bank website to make an online donation. It's all part of an effort to help keep kids in food insecure households fed during the summer months. For us, being able to have campaigns like the one here with Bonds and Albertsons is crucial for a lot of our families so that they can get the, the food that they need when free breakfast and free lunch are not available at home. You guys are for more information on how you can donate, you can go to cbs8.com community. Still ahead tonight, a Grammy-winning superstar is accused of harassment and body shaming. Plus, the couple who didn't let a flooded church stop them from tying the knot. And up next, the race to save some of California's iconic Joshua trees from a wildfire.